So our final featured storyteller of the evening, Adrian Hoff, is another one of my favorite storytellers and definitely one of the busted all-stars. Uh, she uh, was a member of the audience in the first show uh, that we ever put on in February 2014, and I could see her staring intently at me from, the, uh, from her seat in the front row. I was definitely aware of her presence. And uh, as soon as I opened up to the audience, uh, if anybody wanted to share their stories, she was the first one to raise her hand, and she was the first audience member to tell a story on stage, and I made her a feature the very next show. And I'm so glad to have her here. She's also got a fantastic blog about getting around LA motor free called Hoff the Beaten Path. Please welcome Adrian Hoff. Thank you, Scott. So several weeks ago, I was leaving work and headed to Highland Park. I uh, was visiting some friends that just had a baby, and so I was really, really excited to go visit them and go meet their new daughter. And um, I was leaving work and had a pretty stressful day, but none of that mattered. I was going to view their new daughter, get to meet her, so I was on cloud nine. I was so happy and so excited. And uh, so I took the red line to Union Station where I was gonna transfer to the gold line to the Highland Park Station. And as I was on the platform at the Gold Line Station, uh, there was, uh, you know those Metro sheriffs where they'll like check your tap card, make sure that you've gotten your fare and tapped it everything. So um, there are a few of those uh, sheriffs that were on the platform checking cards, making sure everybody was legally riding. And um, so I held out my wallet, which had my tap card in it. And, um, and the, the, the sheriff was, a young guy, probably mid-20s or so, and, um, and usually when they're checking tap cards, there's very little interaction that happens. Um, at the very most, it's like they'll say, hi, how are you? Just very quick greeting. You give them your tap card, they scan it, you move on your way, just get on the train. And, um, but this interaction was a little bit different. It was the, by far the most conversation that I'd ever gotten from one of the Metro Sheriffs and a um, lot more eye contact as well, too. And uh, so the sheriff was kind of um, razzing me a little bit about um, how many cards were in my wallet. And they're like, oh, you think that this is going to scan? And the train was coming. I wasn't trying to make small talk. So I just like, yeah, it's always worked before. Let me know if you have a problem. And um, so finally, it, it worked. No problems there. And uh, the train was pulling to the platform. So I quickly turned to board the train. And uh, I hear behind me the sheriff that just scanned my card saying behind me, damn, you look good. Which really kind of bothered me. Like, this is a sheriff. Like, this is who I'm supposed to be going to from people making these kinds of inappropriate comments. And as any person who rides the metro, whether they've experienced it directly or have seen it, there's a lot of sexual harassment that happens. And it really kind of sucks. And it can be kind of one of those things that, as a female rider, you kind of, unfortunately, just kind of accept as part of, of how the Metro experience can be. And this is the guy who I'm supposed to be turning to to report this type of stuff. And if I can't count on the law enforcement to help me, then who can I turn to? I'm just like me and the other riders, we, we're just kind of screwed then if, if this authority figure then is going to be dishing out the harassment. I didn't let it bother me. I was about to go visit the new child. That is what was important. So I just brushed it off, got on the train, get, grabbed a seat, and took it out of my mind. And it kind of stayed there. I, I tried to remove it completely, but it kind of stayed in my mind without me really thinking about it too heavily. And it wasn't until I got home that night when it started coming to the forefront of my thoughts again. And I could just hear the Metro Sheriff's words over and over again in my head. And they just started bothering me more and more. And it wouldn't go away. Even after I went to bed and woke up the next day, it, it still just really bothered me. And so, being a blogger about my experiences on the Metro, a few days later, 
I took to the computer and wrote an open letter to the sheriff who made the sexually harassing comment to me. And I woke up the next day and I saw that it had kind of gone viral. It was getting shared by people on the East Coast and, com and commented on by people from all over the world. And that was more of a reaction than I kind of expected it to, to get. And um, it didn't take too long before I got to work and I uh, received an email from uh, the director of communications for Metro. And he asked me to give him a call and I was so nervous. I mean, of course I knew what this was about, but I had no idea what the reaction was going to be or if I was going to get any kind of support or get shamed for writing this blog. And the response couldn't have been better. Um, so I called the gentleman on my lunch break, and um, this is also the same person who is spearheading the campaign that you see on Metro currently um, about se sexual harassment and trying to curtail that problem. And uh, so I was just very overwhelmed by the response that I got from Metro. And um, in addition to that, um, he referred me to the, sh uh, the, the captain of the Metro division for uh, the sheriff's department. And um, she was so accommodating and very responsive as well too, which that just, the, the response that I got from Metro and from the LA Sheriff's Department, that is what really overwhelmed me more than anything. It really kind of sucked that this happened and that my faith in, in the authority that is supposed to help me um, ended up being rattled that way. But they really took that opportunity to gain my trust. And um, as a result, I, I wrote a follow-up blog thanking them for their, their response. And that was so wonderful. It got my confidence back in, um, in the fact that, that Metro and the Sheriff's Department, they're there to help me and to help all riders. And throughout this as well, too, the part that really kind of was humbling were the letters, emails, um, tweets, um, and Facebook messages that I was getting from other people who have experienced sexual harassment on the Metro. And some of the stories were really heartbreaking and it, it overwhelmed me to hear these stories from people, some of them who I never even met, who were opening up to me and sharing their experiences with me. And it made me so happy that, they're, that, that they were able to muster up the bravery to share their experience. And I feel so confident now that this is a, a problem that Metro and the Sheriff's Department takes very seriously. And I hope other people who've had similar experiences are now gonna have the same type of experience as well too, where they feel that their issues are being addressed. Thanks. The 210, the 605, the three ways are not so nice. The I-5, the 210, the three ways are not so nice.